Welcome back to the first team. I'm Joe Delio, and joining me is Ryan Roberts. We've got senior bowl invites that we're going to be breaking down. That being Michael Pratt from Tulane and then Jalex Hunt from Houston Christian. These are uh, two very unexpected schools that we're going to be breaking down these two guys from. Ryan, I want to start us yeah. off with, with Michael Pratt, who I knew you were a big fan of, 6'3", 220. Yeah. I, I liked what I, what I saw from him. Not exactly a, a guy that we're going to be banging the table to be a top 10 pick. But there is a, a really realistic projection and an easy projection, I think, for a guy like this to find a role in the NFL, to stick on a roster for an extended period of time. I know that's such a cliche to say with quarterbacks that are, you know, average-ish to slightly above average. But Michael Pratt epitomizes that. Now, I know you definitely got some some background on him. Any any words on, on Michael Pratt here? So I believe he had a fourth round grade from Blesto in the spring. I'm going to verify that real quick because I already had two lane up because you know what, Joe, I'm a good podcaster, man. I'm always prepared and ready to go here. Okay. As I, as that was, actually no, you're stolen, not folks. No, yeah, exactly. No, you're not. That. Okay. Right, well, so well he is. you got, it, I got it. I got it. He was actually an early fifth round grade from Blesto six foot two and four eight. So six foot two and a half, 219 pounds. He's got the prerequisite size. He's got over nine inch hands as well. So he is a guy that just kind of touches all the boxes that you need him to touch and to not and to cross those off. And he also is, and this matters, folks, as we get into like the bet finer parts of his game in a minute here. He is a four-year starter now for Tulane. He has played a Very whole important. lot of football. And we have seen, I, I think we talked about this on the Wednesday show with Matt. We did. We did. experience matters so much at the quarterback position. I mean, you can go through a very long list of one year starters in college football that did not end up being too great, right? They did not end up being too great. I mean, you talk about the Mark Sanchez of the world, the Mitchell Trubisky's of the world, usually one year starters or guys with limited starting experience struggle when they get to the next level. It's the guys that are two, three, and in this case, four year starters that can understand how to retain information and make an easy transition to the next level. So we're talking about a four-year starter, a young man that was rumored that he might enter the transfer portal, but obviously has accepted a senior bowl invite. So he's going to be the, in the 2024 NFL draft, has the size component to, to bring to the field, to the game, six foot two and a half, 220 plus pounds, nine plus inch hands, just kind of hits all those thresholds you would want for the position and from an experience level as well. The experience, I think, is is really important here, and it, it, it a lot of times like we can sit here and talk about like ah oh, four year starter blah 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 quarterback, and it doesn't always necessarily translate to the field. But you really see Michael Pratt being a, a savvy, experienced player, and he's coming. This is such a stupid cliche. I I, I kind of like it when we 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 lean into the cliches as long as we acknowledge them. You're he's coming from an now. academic school. He's coming from an academic school, and I know that this is a smart kid this is a very very smart kid you can see that in his decision making his accuracy is phenomenal in short to intermediate I was a very very um enamored with that precision that he has in the short to intermediate areas a lot of times we get these quarterbacks like JJ McCarthy is one who just does not put the ball in a spot for his receivers to make an easy catch I, I think that we overlook this too often a guy yeah. who can deliver the ball when a guy is moving right in in a position for him to catch the damn ball and keep moving is so important for the quarterback position. And that is yeah. what accuracy is, but it is not talked about enough. Now his arm strength limits him to being strong and short to intermediate. He's not going to guy that's going to push the ball downfield. There's a number of throws where guys have to slow down and come back to the football. So he's an average arm guy, you know, maybe slightly above average. The ball does come out with pace. He does deliver yeah. the ball with, with really good pace and the ball gets in these quick windows uh, effectively. I just think though, the really big thing that I love with a Michael Pratt is that he's decisive, but most importantly, he sets his pressure really well. He's a guy who doesn't crap his pants when he feels somebody coming, coming right at him. He gets the right. ball out to a check down. If he doesn't see things playing out in front of him, he still finds those easy gimme yards to keep the drive going. And I love the way that he throws the ball when, when pressure is bearing down on him. You see a guy who's not afraid, and I love that for a guy who probably is going to be a high-level backup. That's what I want, someone who is willing to step up to the challenge when he's called upon. Well, that's my favorite part of his game, and I think that that's a big part of the experience factor that I talked about a little bit is that he's great against pressure. Like, he like he really does – because 
All right, well, let me rephrase. Nobody's great against pressure. Pressure makes a, a, a quarterback less accurate. You're always going to see guys that are less effective when pressure, their completion percentage goes down, their passer rating, QBR, all that stuff. It all depletes, right? So technically, no one is great against pressure. But he, comparative to other quarterbacks, is very good against pressure because you said something, Joe. He is tough as nails, man. He is not afraid to stay in the pocket. He is not afraid to take one under the chin and stay in there. A lot of guys will fade on their back foot and just get that ball out, And but Michael Pratt will not. He will stand on his toes. He will finish forward, and he will take a shot to make sure that he hits, hits the ball where it needs to go, and then he can handle it. And I actually think he's a – Pretty good athlete, too. I mean, like, he's not like a – I mean, he's not one of these dudes that were, like, you know, <laughs> going goo goo like Caleb Williams. Before, you know, right, Caleb Williams. Last not year, Jane Daniels. Up. He's not an Anthony Richardson from last year, right? Like, yeah. they're, they're not those guys. But his movements, he's a very good athlete in structure to extend and the ability to move in the pocket, out of the pocket as a thrower. He does good things. I have a very strange comp for him, which I guess I'll get to in a minute here. Yeah, no, I no, say it. What is it? Say it. I have a strange comp for him. He too. reminds me of Josh McCown, who was a very just good player coming out of Louisiana Tech, but there was nothing about Josh McCown that you were like, that guy's a stud and that guy is just an amazing athlete, a talent, right? But then you look at Josh McCown, you're like, you know, you good size, requisite arm strength. Josh McCown actually ran like four, six, eight coming out of college as well, which was very surprising. Well, wasn't time, he Sam Houston, right. not Louisiana Tech? I thought he was Louisiana Tech to Sam Houston. I believe you might be. You might be right uh, though. I can't. I can't. I, I I might be butchering that one. Yeah. But, go ahead, oh, no. No. You know what I'm. You know what I'm butchering. There was a Luke McCown that I think went to one of those schools as well. But Josh McCown. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sam Houston okay. State. Great. You are right. I'm actually recollecting it. Respect as we're the SCS. Yes. I'm sorry. So he actually ran a pretty good forty. He was a pretty good athlete. He was one of those guys, though. Why did Josh McCown last so long in the NFL? Because he just checked so many boxes, man. None of the boxes had exclamation points in it, though. Like, his arm strength wasn't amazing. His his anticipation wasn't amazing. His a- athleticism wasn't amazing. But it was all solid to good. Every single part of it. And that's how I feel about Michael Pratt. I think his ball placement accuracy is good. I think his arm strength is Solid to good. I like I like it. I think from an NFL average perspective, it is slightly above average. I would agree with you in that sense. I actually like his downfield arm a little bit more than you, I think. Because I actually think yeah. that his accuracy down the field, bucket throws, they're pretty dang good, man. He was the, the ball bucket throws are good. It's just if I need to ask him to like drive, drive the ball drive the into ball. a really yeah. deep part of the field, it's just not gonna happen. That's fair. That's fair. But I think that from an anticipation perspective, from an accuracy perspective, he can still make a lot of throws down the field that are going to keep you creating explosive plays. And I think that he is a good mover, tough kid. I I think that he's going to make it, right? And, and mm. what may, what means make it 100%? I think that some people, if they're hearing the name Michael Pratt for, for a couple of years now and seeing the flashes of Michael Pratt, We'll look at him and say, you know, if he's a long-term starter, that's a failure. And I'm like, no, the baseline is a long-term starter. I think that he can do that for sure. Can he develop into a starting quarterback in the NFL? It's possible, man. It really is possible. He has desirable traits. I just think that he might eventually, if he is a starter, he might get into that bucket where it's like, hmm, he's good. But is he so good that you were able to give him a big second contract, right? Or is he so yeah. good? That you're gonna make him the face of a franchise. That's the question long term, but the short term, I Mike, Michael Pratt's probably my I don't want to call him a sleeper because like we know who he is, but like he's my guy in this class where I'm just like, you know what? Like I, I'll put my I'll put my stamp on him. I'll stand on a table for Michael Pratt. I will. I think that he will be a very good backup at worst. I think that he will be a potential starter, low end starter on the next level. I think he has that upside. I do. So I have a a top 100 grade on him, a high top 100 grade on him for, for everything that you just said there at the bare, bare minimum. I know this kid is going to be a really good backup that when I need to call upon him, he's going to step in. And the, the crazy thing is there's a lot of teams out there that have just really terrible backup quarterbacks. And I'm looking at the situation right now with the New York Giants, that they're trotting out Tommy freaking DeVito as the guy who's playing for him. The kid can't even throw anything. But here we are. We're, we, we've got Michael Pratt, and I think that Michael Pratt uh, is, is somebody who can step in and be that really good, nice backup. 
kind of like maybe a, a thought of what happened with Kirk Cousins. And not, that's not a, a, a talent comparison, but just where he's a backup for a little bit. Maybe something happens with the starter. He has to step in and we're just like, oh, this, this Michael and, Pratt kid. Why did we not give this this kid kid more credit for his capability? But I agree with that notion of if he does get the opportunity and somebody is bullish on him and maybe he looks really good in practice and he does get that opportunity to start and he does well, he could be either a long-term starter or he also feels like one of those dudes that just gets passed around, that gets, you know, bounces from team to team, kind of like Josh Dobbs where he ends up on one team and then someone's or, in a, in a critical corner. Or Josh McCown. I, I, I feel like Josh Dobbs <laughs> has done it on a little bit better level. I, Josh McCown's not a, not, is not a bad McCown one. Josh McCown was Foles, a good Nick Foles, back in the NFL. Nick, you're, you're wild, Nick Foles is wild. another good one where these guys just okay. – you, you really need a spot a, a spot starter or a, a Case Keenum, a Colt McCoy, these types of guys that you're just like, I need a starter. I need a starter. Who am I going to go to? Let's sign this guy or trade for this guy, and he's going to fill in and get the job done because we're trying to push for a playoff. Is he going yep. to win us a football game when we're down by three? Probably not. But he is, is he a guy that our defense is playing really well, just does enough to help us move the ball and stay on schedule? I think that Michael Pratt's that guy. I think so. Here's my take on Michael Pratt, and then I want to kind of preface something real quick after that. So I believe, because I, I, I correct you, pretty much on the same page here, top 100, but I lean more to the top 75. I, I think that he same. is that type of player for me. I have a take though, Joe. I think that he's not going to get out of the top fifty. That's what I believe. I think I Michael that. will be a top fifty pick when all is said and done. At least a top sixty four pick because teams are obviously star for quarterbacks, and he just does a lot of things very well and at a in a requisite level that you would want. I like Willie Fritz as a coach, Joe. But all I'll say is is that Tulane before Michael Pratt, not great. Tulane after after Michael Pratt. Not sure if that'll be great either. I think mm-hmm. that we need a deep appreciation for how good and how instrumental Michael Pratt has been for a team that we also forget pretty quickly. Well, they win 11 games last year and beat USC in the in the Rose Bowl. Like, I mean, they would have been Old Miss. Oh, they would have been Old Miss too. Probably, probably. I mean, he's done a tremendous job at Tulane. So just outside of the NFL draft evaluation for a second. Kid had just did tremendous stuff in college, man. What a college quarterback. Like, honestly, he helped really rebuild a program that was not in great shape when Willie Fritz first got there. And now they are in a very good spot, a better spot than when, when he left. But I do think that eventually he will have an opportunity to potentially start in, for an NFL team. But at worst, he's going to be a really good backup in my estimation.